All right, hello everyone. My name is Corey Dowds. I'm an astrologer. My website is Eye of the Veda. So now I'm doing a course on the Rashis of Jyotish. So these are Rashi is a name for the sign in in Sanskrit. Um, all right, so now we're on Capricorn. Capricorn is called Makara in Sanskrit and in the Vedic astrology books. It's called the Makara Rashi. Makara literally means a crocodile. It also means an alligator if these books were written in America, but in Asia they don't have alligators, they have crocodiles, but it's the same basic thing. And really a makara can also mean any kind of large aquatic animal. And um, you know, there is some overlap and 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 all with that, like a lot of Sanskrit words. Um so right off the bat, we know that Capricorn is the sign that rules alligators and crocodiles. And as I've explained in my environments course, uh, where I focus mostly on the environments, uh, Capricorn rules swamps and marshes and places where alligators would dwell. So go watch those videos on here if, if, you've, you know, if you're curious about reading environments of, you know, in a chart. But now we're going to talk about Capricorn um, in a lot of other ways. And the, the, the unique thing about Capricorn is that it's, it's ruled by Saturn and Saturn is very slow, you know, he, so, so Saturn, his name is Shani, um, which is literally a Sanskrit word, which means the one who moves slowly. Saturn takes 30 years to go around the Zodiac, which, you know, the opposite sign, ca Cancer, the moon goes around the Zodiac in one month. So we can get a real feel for how this pole of energy is about cancer. The opposite sign of Capricorn is about the mind, the emotions, quick changes, the internal changes. Capricorn is a, about the external situation. Um, and it's about things that stand the test of time more so. So it's ruled by Saturn, which is the plant that rules time and that rules the longest units of time, as we were just saying. Um, and everything you're going to see about Capricorn is really... Everything that you're going to see about Capricorn is really going to be about does this native, um, how should I put it? I'll put it this way. Capricorn is really the sign of, of karmas. It's the sign of karmas, though, that stand the test of time, which are the most important karmas, karmas that have a lasting effect on you in your life. Um, so Capricorn individuals, and I'll show you examples of that in a moment, they're the types of people who are really going to do things so thoroughly when it's strong and good, they're going to do something and it's going to stand the test of time, just like Saturn, who doesn't go back to Capricorn for 30 more years. So it's solid before, you know what I mean? It's, it's just about taking your time and doing something right, doing it thoroughly, doing it the right way. Um, Similarly, if you have Saturn in the 10th house, you'll, you'll be a lot more like that as well, where you will want to do, take your time and maybe just accomplishing one important thing in your life is, is all you care about, but you'll accomplish that one thing so thoroughly and so grandly that the rest of the world will build upon it. Like that's why Saturn rules the root chakra and the foundation. <clears throat> So there's really a lot that could be said about this, but basically understand that, yeah, these, these Capricorn individuals, they're actually, it's like the crocodile. The crocodile is something that if you go in the fossil record, it has not evolved since the time of the dinosaurs. All these other animals have been evolving and growing and changing. The crocodile is the exact same skeleton as it was in the time of the dinosaurs. And I've seen a crocodile skeleton myself at a museum in Charleston. I went to confirm this because my teacher told me this and I was like, that's wild. And uh, so I went and looked into it and this is completely true. Another thing that he didn't know, but then I found through my own research was that crocodiles display, as well as some other reptiles, they display something that science calls negligible senescence, which means basically they don't die unless they run out of food or their environment shifts or they get so big that they can't find enough food to feed them or if they get a disease or something but they actually don't die of old age which is amazing and so fascinating because saturn rules old age and it rules longevity so for those of you who are older and are watching this and you want to know how to make the best of your longevity and live the longest and uh you know have the most suffering free life the key is in saturn and you want to 
um, work with your Saturn in that way. So um, now let's talk about Capricorn um, as Parashara described it. Capricorn, Nakra, um, that's another uh, case or way of saying Makara. Um, the crocodile Rashi, ruled by Saturn, Tamasic, uh, earthy, like all the earth signs, um, southern, like all the earth signs, um, vigorous at night, it's night strong. Capricorn is a sign that, like I talked about in my video on New Orleans, New Orleans is ruled by Capricorn, um, and I discussed how that's a very night strong city, it's good for the nightlife. So that's really the only context that I've been able to use that day strong or night strong quality. It's very mysterious, very few people even know what that's about. And I'm just the kind that would rather openly say that than try to make up stuff, <laughs> you know, like you hear so often on YouTube. Um, large limbed. So, oh, sorry, back rising. Yeah, Capricorn's back rising. Again, that's a very mysterious cryptic part of Vedic astrology that um, we're going to just move on from because I, I don't truly know what, what Parashara meant by that or how to use that information the best. Um, Large limbed though, that's great. That's really simple. Um, Capricorn is literally just a larger limbed sign. It's a bigger bodied sign. It's one of the biggest. And that makes sense because crocodiles are some of the biggest animals on the planet that a human would encounter. Um, Aries, Leo, and Capricorn are the three biggest bodied signs. They're all signs that are also quadruped, you know, four footed, which is good to know. Um, and, uh, you know, they're like big beasts, they're symbols. So that should you should be able to remember that. Um, variegated colored. So it's mixed colored. It's like camouflage or mottled um, mixed colors. Those, those types of environments, you'll see your Capricorn item. Like I've done a lot of Prajna, you know, I'm really into Prajna and stuff. So I've got examples on, on here of how that's worked, um, where you might say your item is in a Capricorn environment and then you, you lost your keys and they, they fell into the brush and they kind of blended in with it. Work. And it's also very cool because Capricorn is a sign that has a lot to do with the military. Mars is exalted there. And so the camouflage of the military and all, that's one way you can make that connection. Um, Capricorn is a sign of moving in watery ground. Um, so it's about moving in the watery ground. That's actually, um, that's so revealing. And so that's also why Capricorn rules swamps, marshes, muddy muddy places places of muddy ground um and then uh I, like for example i talked about it in a previous video but um when i first moved to where i live now i live in a capricorn environment that has a lake and, um, right behind me and there was a gator in that lake um at one point and when i moved i had a lot of capricorn transits being triggered but even in my D4 Varga, um, Capricorn was the Rashi that was being triggered based on the Chatishtaya Dasha of, of Gemini. So when you get like really specific, um, you'll be able to see these these environments and these things coming up in your life. Um, I guess it's it's too much for me to explain now. I don't really remember the details, but um, you can you can really use that well in prediction of environments. Let's just put it that way. Um, now this is really, really neat. Capricorn is four footed at the beginning and then is without feet at the end or is footless and moving in the water because that's the tail of the gator, remember? Without feet at the end is imagined the water goer, the Jalachara. I love that, um, the water goer. So uh, a lot of people who have a lot to do with moving through water will, will be Capricorns. And, and some of you might know that I am a surfer and I actually did some research and found that so many big surfers have a lot of Capricorn and cancer in their chart. And that's just like so obvious. Like how cool is that? Because, you know, you tropical cancer is the point of the summer. It's when everyone goes to the beach, it rules the beach. It's the environment of the beach. Um, Capricorn is, like I said, moving through the water, watery ground. Um, you know, the water goer is literally the crocodile and, you know, you're paddling and, you know, you're almost like, you know, like a prostrate, like a, like a crocodile. Um, one of the other signs that's really big for surfing is Pisces as well. And so these are both the signs of being footless and moving through water. 
So that is just very literal. Like when you look at that, those ancient books, and you translate that to modern day uh, big time surfers and a lot of the people that I know who are very serious surfers, I don't have the charts for a lot of professional surfers, but people who have spent their lives surfing, um, really, yeah, you see a lot of Capricorns. So that's really neat. Now I'm gonna show some examples and I'm focusing on, I'm gonna focus on athletes because Capricorn seems to, this idea of making someone so strong that they stand the test of time, a strong Capricorn Saturn energy. I noticed that a lot of the best athletes and champions of all these different sports fields have a lot of Capricorn involved in their chart. And wouldn't that make sense? All right, so. Oh, that's that little text message is probably confirming how true that was. Anyways, Muhammad Ali. Here we have the chart of Muhammad Ali. He had sun in Capricorn in the sixth house of enemies. Sun is also his ruling planet and it's also his Atmakarika. So that's a very, very Capricorn person. Um, you know, this is a guy that was kind of unbeatable. Um, he stood the test of time and he didn't just have, you know, like one, one victory. Okay. Now I just need to turn that off. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so now that I didn't want to spend too much time on Muhammad Ali, just showing you that these are the, the Capricorn souls are going to be big movers and shakers in the world. Um, Tiger Woods, he is a Virgo rising. So his Mercury is his ruling planet and his Mercury goes to Capricorn. So, you know, so he's got this Capricorn as a self kind of factor for him. And he's, an, a, the, you know, this golfer that everyone knows. I don't care about golf, but I know who Tiger Woods is. So it's kind of interesting. Um, and, you know, like, um, I know that uh, he had a controversy about, I don't, I don't know, and I don't really even care, but he had some controversy with affairs and some sexual misconduct he was having. And, and that's kind of interesting because Venus relationships is in Scorpio and it's with Rahu, which can make one really feel like they're not getting a good deal in their relationships. And it can make one be driven to go to other partnerships. And the seventh Lord is in the eighth house of breaks and changes and like, and then uh, the house of marriage, K, it has K2 in it, the ninth house. Then also, um, I don't even know how true this is, but he, I always heard that he had like a really uh, strict father that like forced him to play golf. You know what I mean? And like really like pushed him. And you, I did notice that the sun is shaming Mercury here because whenever a planet's in the fifth house and is with the sun, it is said to be shamed. So the father, son, shaming him um, in the house of fifth house of like advancement <clears throat> and, you know, being very, having, being very competent. And Saturn is also in the sign of the father, which might show an affliction there. All right. <clears throat> Here we have the chart of Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky was um, the champion of hockey, you know, um, one of the biggest names ever, Capricorn rising, he has Capricorn, he has Saturn in the ascendant, so that's a Maha Purusha yoga, a great person yoga with regards to Saturn and Capricorn. Jupiter is debilitated, but Jupiter is not his ruling planet, Saturn is, and so Jupiter's boosting him, um, which is Saturn. So that's really great. Notice also that his Abhmakarka is Venus and it's exalted and it is, um, Venus is very, very important for athletes. You don't think that it's not the traditional, like common understanding of, of astrology, but it is. And I'm just here to tell you that. Okay. So you can take my word for it or not, but Venus is Virya, your ability to rejuvenate and it's really your vitality. Vedic philosophy is all about like Venus and Shakti and Prana, you know, Venus is the master of Prana, the master of your strength. Um, Hanuman was son of the wind, you know, all this, all these connections to strength and Venus. Um, it's just not what people often see and having a beauty, a beautiful body is oftentimes just a, sh a, sh a sign of being robust and healthy. Venus is how you rejuvenate. It's how you glow. It's, it's like you're, you're, um, 
It's your virya. Yeah. If you know that concept, then that's what that is. That is what you need to be an athlete. Because otherwise, if you just have the Mars or the Saturn or the hard training ability, you never recover from your training. You're just going to get injured and you're just never going to come back from that first injury that happens. I mean, how often do you hear about athletes who were so great and then they had a bad injury, you know, and they never bounce back from that? So Venus is that planet which provides like that um, ability to rejuvenate, the cushion, the watery element, the ability to absorb the nutrients and, and bounce back. Um, so it's very important for athletes as well, not just Mars. All right, now we're looking at the chart of Michael Jordan. So um, his, he's a Taurus. His ruling planet goes to Capricorn. So just like how we saw Tiger Woods, just like how we saw Muhammad Ali, just like how we saw Wayne Gretzky, their ruling planets are going to the field of Capricorn. And Capricorn is that field of really like heroic action, which can translate to sports as well, you know, but it can also be, you know, in a lot of contexts, it's more of a, an important thing even than sports, but sports are one way where we can, where we can see this Capricorn working out. Um, in my book that I'm working, that I'm almost finished with, I spend about 35 pages describing Capricorn. So there's a lot more that I want to share, but for the, for brevity's sake, I can't go into all that right now or no one would click on a two hour video. So, so I'm just trying to make this point that Capricorn is the sign of karma, of action, of doing. It's the 10th sign. The 10th house is the karma baba, the action house. The 10th house is what's dominating above you in the sky. In the same way, Capricorn is the sign of that. So Michael Jordan dominated in basketball, you know, um, again, ruled by Venus. Um, he had to have that virya and that vitality to bounce back. And um, K2 there definitely, you know, afflicted him in some ways probably and, and all. And, and he had issues and he went and did baseball and he wasn't that great at baseball. Um, so, you know, he wasn't perfect. But in general, we can see that he had a lot of he stood the test of time, you know, Air Jordan, you know, they're just like there are colloquial phrases that are based around him. He's his Nike shoe, you know, all this stuff. Um, Venus rules clothing. Um, OK, so that's a pretty good example, too, of another um, of another Makara type person who was quite strong. Um, this is the chart of uh, David Wilcock. He's like a researcher in the metaphysical occult world, you know, and um, he has his ruling planet Mars exalted in Capricorn. And Mars has to do with research. And the third house has to do with study and research. And um, it's exalted. It's with Rahu. So he has that affliction there. And then you notice that also the, uh, or Rahu can also do with the paranormal, you know, um, He's, in, he's, he's like a, one of the biggest experts on that stuff and like UFOs are just weird subjects, you know. Um, he's, a real, he's really a, a, a wealth of knowledge. Um, and then his ruling planet Capricorn goes into the eighth house, which is also, sorry, his, the ruler of Capricorn Saturn goes into the eighth house, which is the house of research as well. Um, so he has basically someone who has done that same Capricorn thing, but in the field of science and research where he's written a bunch of best-selling books, the source field investigations, the synchronicity key. You guys should check those out if you're into like esoteric, just like weird um, facts, weird studies that no one talks about, you know, stuff like that. He's got all these peer-reviewed studies that prove um, – <clears throat> That he proves astrology in one chapter, you know, cites a bunch of studies about it. Um, but that's not his only thing. He's he's really pretty out there. He just he aggregates a lot of different data. Um, then Weird Al Yankovic. So this is the chart of Weird Al Yankovic, who was a parody singer, and I've talked about him before, so I won't spend too much time on it. But basically, he had Saturn and Capricorn. He has the same Mahapurusha Yoga. He has somehow managed to stay relevant, to stay the, stand the test of time. He's been parodying people since Michael Jackson did Beat It, you know, and he, he did just eat it, you know, and that's amazing. Like, that's powerfully, that's powerful karma. Let's put it that way. Um, he's very, very tech savvy, and he's somehow able to be socially relevant. So that's kind of another example of that Capricorn energy standing the test of time. Um, Mark Hamill, um, Mark Hamill 
played Luke Skywalker in Star Wars. That is a heroic role that has stood the test of time that no one has been able to outdo and no one will outdo probably in the Star Wars world. And we notice that he is a Capricorn rising. His ruling planet Saturn is exalted in the 10th house, just like the 10th sign Capricorn. And it's funny because with a debilitated son, because he wasn't the real hero, he was acting and he was playing a hero. So it's kind of interesting. So then, you know, Saturn's son can create certain psychological issues that would, would be relatable to someone who went through their life being idolized as a hero, but knowing that they aren't. Um, you can think about that one on your own if you like. But yeah, Mark Hamill is a good example of another Capricorn soul. And this is the chart of... Uh, this is the chart of a crazy death that happened in Thailand where it's actually, this was back in 20, 2014. I don't remember the details. I should have probably read up on this more before I was going to use this example, but a number of people, or maybe just one woman, I want to say fell into this lake or this exhibit where there were all these crocodiles and she was eaten. And, and this day in this place, I read in the news back in 2014 when I was first learning about Capricorn being the gator and they were devoured by crocodiles at this moment. And look how the, the sign rising is score here, the sign of death. Mars goes to the third house, which is the eighth from the eighth and deals with death. Capricorn is the sign of the gator and the crocodile. Um, and Mars and Saturn are interchanging. And you know, there's other things. I'm sure that this person's chart had to have a lot of placements um, that would indicate them being eaten by a wild animal um but it's just very interesting because that happened to occur during a time when capricorn had a strong malefic in it and it was at the exact moment that the ruling planet was there um okay so i hope that this example or that these examples are you know good and help you guys kind of understand at least some of the different dimensions of capricorn there's always so many dimensions to every sign um, you know, if you have any questions about this or examples or thoughts or feedback, feel free to share. We've only got two more signs left to go, um, Aquarius and Pisces, and then this little Rashi course will be done. I'm also still trying to teach this course on Mercury's Lajitadi of Ashtas. Um, and then I also want to do uh, some videos on the eclipse coming up. Because I, I wrote, a, I made some predictions on my website. You can look at my website there if you want. I made some predictions about this upcoming eclipse, some mundane predictions. Um, and I also spoke about how my previous predictions were correct. So, I mean, I don't really like to talk about myself, but, you know, nobody else is going to probably even notice this. So, back in April of 2018, I made a video saying what one might expect when Saturn crosses through Capricorn. And... In that video, I talked about how we were going to have major UFO disclosures and we we're going to have UFOs taken much more seriously in the world and by the government because Capricorn is a sign of things flying in the air also. I didn't have time to go into that here, but it's a sign of airplanes, UFOs, aviation, um, the planets, uh, things like that, birds. Um, and so I knew that with Jupiter manifesting Capricorn back during 2018 and with K2 and Saturn there, and now Jupiter ingressing into Capricorn, there's going to be major UFO disclosures, major UFO progress moving forward. And in, on September 16th, the U.S. Navy officially disclosed UFOs. I don't know if you guys knew that, but the Navy officially officially as official as it'll ever be acknowledge that yes this video that was leaked is an unidentified <clears throat> flying object and we don't know anything about it and even the pilot that was on the, the video saying like what the fuck is that like even those guys uh that pilot is even going around doing ufo conferences speaking about this <clears throat> this is all just allowed to be coming out now strangely enough this video had existed for years, but finally the, the Navy now admitted it. And there was actually another thing that came out. So when I mentioned aviation and I said how there would be major new advancements in aviation, Boeing has come out with a new type of engine, flight type of flight engines that are going to be amazing. And then also there's this new type of 
aviation engine that I can share the headline in the in a link below or something. But basically, you'll be able to fly from the UK to Australia in just a couple of hours with some really advanced engine. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot more things like that coming out. And then just just recently, um, there were there are new. Um, basically, the government has been patenting these things. Uh, the U.S. government has been patenting these these flying devices that basically look identical to the triangular UFO craft that everyone's been supposedly seeing for so long and I can share links about that as well um, because it's not being talked about very much but their their excuse for why they finally have to patent these things is because like China might beat them to it or stuff like that um, who knows if that's really why or what but um, yeah there's a lot of new advancements um, going on in aviation in these Capricorn fields um, just as it should based on these transits okay so I hope that gives you guys a lot about Capricorn Take care.